Hello and welcome back to another Warlords of Draenor video. This time we're going to be going through some more garrison details that have been data mined, but don't worry, it's quite a bit different from the previous video. We actually have some solid information, which is uh, really pretty damn good to see, actually. So let's just get right into the video and talk about garrison specs. Uh, now this is kind of interesting, it's not something that I really knew we had. Anyway, I'm just going to list off basically what they are. So the first one is show posts, and these basically enable you to stable five or more mounts in your stables for public display. I think that's really nice, and maybe those people who hang out in Stormwind with their, you know, the big fancy ashes of Alar, well, this is going to be of interest to them. And I think that's definitely fair enough. Once again, it's just a way that you can reflect your character's progress inside your garrison, which I think is great, so all in all, pretty good thing. Next, we have the Mount Trader. This is described as a rare Mount Trader that has uh, taken up shop in your Garrison Stables building. I have no idea what this is. I don't know if this will perhaps allow you to purchase some rare mounts, or make some money, or anything like that. Basically, we just don't know the information, but I think it could be very interesting. Perhaps you could do, like, quests for your Mount Trader to find some, like, rare beast that you could then, you know, tame and and uh, sell at your mount trader or something like that. I'm not particularly sure. It could be rather interesting, though. All right, the next one is the recall portal. This will allow you to abort a current mission and immediately bring your followers back. Now, this is rather, well, perhaps it's uh, like the missions that you do with your followers are maybe reported to you in real time. So maybe you just get to see a bar of their combat progress, maybe their health or something like that. And if you could see that that's going bad, then maybe you can recall them. And then, of course, you could just use this recall portal if you want to free up a follower to do something else. So maybe one of your warriors has to, happens to be a really good miner, but you also want to place someone in your mines. Maybe you could just use the recall um, portal to bring your miner back so that you can then use him in your mines. Uh, makes sense, I guess, and it's just another little bit of functionality there, which uh, I guess just prevents some headache if you maybe do a misclick and then send your followers off for a 24-hour long mission. So next, we have one called the Headhunter. This is an NPC that recruits a random follower with a specific trait, ability, or role, and it costs 10 material. I'm guessing material, that's just an ambiguous term for some sort of garrison resource, but essentially, you know, you, you, you cough up 10 of them, and you can get a slightly more specific follower. And that's definitely good if you're maybe looking to fill out some gaps in your current roster of, uh, of guys, so yeah, fair enough, it's pretty cool. The next one is the Black Rock Chef, which enables access to garrison cooking dailies. I wonder if that's a second set of cooking dailies. I'd imagine it is, and that's definitely kind of cool. Then next, there's the Black Rock Mining Cart, which increases your chance... Actually, no, it doesn't. It actually grants you a chance to discover Black Rock Mining Carts um, that are full of extra ore. That's that's pretty cool, actually. You know, it's a little bit of uh, randomness to spice up your mining experience. And overall, these, these specialization things, I'm not too sure if they just come by default and you get to choose between them or if they're an unlockable thing, but there's definitely gameplay in there. Okay, so next we have the orchard. This um, just is described as, plant an orchard in your garrison that will produce rare fruit. So I'm guessing that's something that's going to be of interest to the cooks out there. Then we have the exquisite skinning knife, which actually increases your hourly skin gathering rate by 10%. I'm guessing there's some sort of building which is tied to skinning, and perhaps this knife will buff that building. Then we have one called Gem Finding. This will give your mining nodes in your garrison a chance to produce rare gems. Pretty useful, and once again we're seeing that this is going to be useful to both miners and enchanters, or not enchanters, sorry, jewel crafters, and lots of different things there. It's pretty cool. Then next we have Mass Teleport. This removes the time travel for the first mission every day that requires five followers. So I'm guessing a, a mission may be comprised of an hour to get there, two hours to do the mission, and an hour to get back. Well, this will just remove um, a part of the travel time, which is pretty nice. Next, there's one called City Travel. This provides access portals that grant uh, transport to cities other than Orgrimmar and uh, Stormwind. I'm guessing this is just a kind of teleporter thing within, um, you know, just within Draenor. I don't know what I think about this. A part of it's like, good, yeah, there's no flying, therefore we'll be able to port around a little bit more. But I really hope it doesn't turn in, like, the game just doesn't turn into you always being in your garrison and that being the complete hub of everything. I'd prefer that the garrison was just a cool thing in the world um, that you could go and do and, and use. But I don't want it to be the new Dalaran or the new um, Vale City. Yeah, I still want the Temple of Karabor and Bladefist, uh, whatever that's called, the Orc one. I still want them to be the main cities for your faction to hang out at. I think it would be pretty sad if all the players just were at their garrisons, not really interacting with anyone else. 
So, I'm a little bit iffy there. Anyway, finally there's one called the Mechanical Picker, which will automate harvesting herbs from your garden. Which is a nice little quality of life thing. Okay, so that is basically those specs covered. Now I'm just going to go through descriptions of the buildings that have been data mined. Uh, this may be a little bit lengthy, but I'm sure it will be of interest. So first of all, we have the Alchemy Lab. This will provide, uh, will allow you to create a variety of reagents and interesting alchemical wonders. It generates a batch of alchemy reagents daily and allows the production of alchemical items. The building can store um, at most one batch at a time, and then new batches are only stored if a new... Um, you know, if you free up a space by collecting some stuff. Um, now that's kind of interesting, actually, um, because it means that you definitely have to go there and be a little bit more active. You can't just leave it for a week and then come back with a lot of stuff. So, um, I think the upgrade for that allows it to store two daily batches worth of alchemy reagents. And then also, when you get to your third upgrade level, it unlocks specializations, and uh, the ingredient capacity increases up to a maximum of four daily batches. Alright, so the level 1 armory stores and maintains the armaments used by your garrison's inhabitants. I think that might be a nearly required thing, I guess. Um, anyway, the level 2 armory will increase the item level of all followers by 1 and give access to new defense missions. That's interesting to me. A lot of people have been talking about defense missions and wanting to basically defend your garrison. That's nice. And then finally, the uh, the final like upgrade for it provides access to upgrade mission bonus. I don't know exactly what that is, but maybe it's just some sort of mission bonus thingy. And then it will also unlock specializations, but we have not found out what they might be yet. For the barn, it will basically house your items, or not your items, your, your animals, and uh, provide the garrison with leather, meat, and cloth. It also gives you access to these special provision missions. Then when you upgrade it, it can store up to two days worth of agricultural goods, and when you fully upgrade it, you unlock specializations, and the, uh, the capacity increases up to four days worth of alchemical, or al archaeological, no, wow, I can't even English, agricultural goods. Then the barracks. Well, the barracks itself basically just houses your garrison's military force and your followers. And then when you upgrade it, it will increase the maximum number of followers and unlock new patrol missions. Then um, it would, when you upgrade it again, it can increase the maximum amount of followers and then provide some new leadership mission bonuses. I'm guessing that's just a new feature for missions. And then the final one will, again, upgrade the maximum amount of followers, but it will also unlock specializations. Um, again, we don't know the details about them. All right, then next we have the Enchanter Study. This creates both uh, magical precursors that form an, an, an enchantment, and it also uh, can basically create usable item enchants, which is pretty interesting. It will generate a batch of enchanting components daily, and it will allow the production of full-on enchantments for your gear and that kind of thing. The building can store at most one batch of these at a time, and new batches are only made if you actually free up storage space. Then when you upgrade it, it can store up to two daily um, batches worth of enchanting components. And when it's fully upgraded, you unlock specializations and the ingredients capacity increases up to the maximum of four daily batches worth. Then we have the engineering works. This is pretty cool, actually. It will produce a lot of uh, just basically useful gizmos and things. What it will do is that every day it generates a batch of engineering parts, allows the production of mechanical items and that kind of thing. And uh, once again, only one batch at a time. When you upgrade it, you can get two batches worth of engineering parts. And then also when you fully upgrade, you get specializations. And, and then you upgrade your capacity, to, uh, your capacity to four batches. Then we have the fishing shack. This will provide bait, tackle and support things for uh, you being a fisher and it will provide access to a fishing merchant and some new fishing daily quests. When you upgrade it again, you get um, your number of daily quests up to three, and then when you fully upgrade it, you get five daily fishing quests. Next, we have the Gem Boutique. This will generate a bunch of jewel crafting components daily, basically what we expect. It can do one batch at a time. When you upgrade it again, then you can have two batches of daily um, components, and when it's fully upgraded, you unlock specializations, and the capacity increases up to four daily batches worth. Next, we have the Herb Garden. This is, uh, well, interesting enough, I suppose. It's uh, basically just a garden in which you can get Draenor herbs. And uh, the very first one is just a small garden that grows a few herbs. And then as you expand it um, into the second level, you'll get even more herbs. And then finally, the, the final level of it is just the maximum amount of herbs that you can possibly have in a herb garden. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what you'd expect. The next we have the inn. Now the inn is interesting in that it's used for recruiting new followers and it gives you access to recruiting mich uh, missions. When you upgrade it once, it will provide you access to the, ki uh, the kitchen and cooking trade skill merchants. 
and then when you upgrade it again, it will actually unlock some specializations. Then we have the lumber mill. This will basically give you materials which assist with the building and upgrading of your garrison. It will every day generate a daily shipment of these materials, but the mill can only, of course, store one shipment at a time, so you'll need to go there and clear that out. When you upgrade it once, it can store up to two shipments, and when you fully upgrade it, then you get some specializations, and the material capacity increases to four daily shipments. Then we have the Mage Tower. This is um, basically just a thing that will give you some research missions and mission bonuses. Then when you upgrade it again, it will give you even more mission bonuses. And when fully upgraded, it will get you some specializations. Then we have the Menagerie. This will provide you just with some opportunities to tweak around with your pets. And it will give you some new pet options and some pet missions. We don't know about its upgrades. Then we have the mine. It's described as a mine that was once abandoned, but now there are underground riches ready to be discovered. It will generate a shipment of ore every day, and it will also generate some mining nodes that you yourself can mine. When you upgrade it once, you get access to a new mine shaft with new nodes, and uh, then the capacity for storing iron ore shipments increases up to two. The final upgrade for it unlocks another mine shaft with access to rich mining nodes, and then your ore capacity expands to a maximum of four daily shipments. Then we have the, uh, the salvage yard. This will turn other people's trash into your treasure. It transmutes salvage into material and enables new salvage missions. When you upgrade it, then it will allow you to transmute materials to gold, and then the full upgrade will unlock some specializations. Maybe this is just a way of making some raw gold. I think that's actually pretty interesting, and maybe that could be a service that a lot of people would be interested in. Then next, we have the scribe's quarters. This will produce a whole bunch of um, well, inscription things. As always, it does one batch daily, and uh, allows you to produce some glyphs from that. The building can store at most one batch at a time, and new batches are only produced if there's free storage. The next upgrade increases your batches to two per day, and then the final one increases your batches to four and unlocks some specializations. We also have a listing for the sparring arena here, but no information for it. Then we have the stables. This will provide care for your mounts and pack animals, which are used to help travel you across uh, Draenor. What it will do is it will reduce mission travel time by 25% and access, uh, like at least give you access to new exploration missions. Then when you upgrade it, it will increase your player mounted speed in Draenor and then also provide access to pack animal missions and give you some bonuses to those. And then finally, you can unlock some specializations for it. Next, we have the storehouse. This will allow you to keep all your gar uh, garrison's items safe and secure, and it will enable logistics missions, which will increase the daily storage batches for, or, you know, for shipments on every other garrison building by one. When you upgrade that again, it will um, enable you access to your, your personal bank. Then it will also increase your daily storage for other buildings up to two. And then finally, you will unlock some specializations and it will upgrade your daily batch storage to three for every other building. Ah, this is a... This is a long list of things to get through, but we're nearly there. Next up, we have the Tailoring Emporium. This will, as always, generate a batch of tailor, uh, tailoring components daily, and it will allow you to produce some tailored items. You can store at most one batch at a time, as we already know. The first upgrade will allow you to store two daily batches, and then the final upgrade will allow you to store four daily batches and unlock some specializations. Then uh, next up, we have the Forge. This will, as always, create a batch of blacksmithing components daily and then the next upgrade will give you two blacksmith components um, batches daily and then the final upgrade will increase your storage capacity to four blacksmith um, like you know pack thingies per day then next up we have the tannery uh, yes tannery this will increase or generate even a batch of leather working components daily which will allow you to produce some leather working items the level 1 building can store 1 batch, the level 2 building can store 2, and the level 3 building can store 4, and when you hit level 3, you'll unlock some specializations. Then we have the Trading Post. This is the garrison's center of commerce uh, with the natives of Draenor. It opens some new trading routes and grants access to trading missions. When you upgrade it, you will get an additional trading route, and the final upgrade will unlock some specializations. They also have a listing here for the workshop, but they didn't really say anything about it. And that is, uh, that's essentially it in terms of this new data mine information. I just thought it'd be interesting to, you know, lay that all out there so people can actually understand a little bit more of how these buildings go. Essentially, if it's a profession building, it will store X number of batches of whatever profession-related resource that is there, and then you'll be able to make profession-related items with those resources. Though I would imagine that they will not give you access to every single possible thing that... 
um, that particular profession can do because then it would kind of start removing the point of professions. Anyway, so that's it for this quick little look at uh, Garrison. Sorry if things got a little bit wordy there in the middle, but kind of needed to get through it some way. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.